Hi, it's Robin, and today I'm filming in front of a live studio audience. Hi! Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yay! <Hey>. Big! Okay. <laughs> I've got my bunch of my kits here, and this is the Atari 2600 Plus, also previously known as the Atari Video Computer System. Well, this is a brand new thing that just came out this year in 2023. Does anybody know what year the original Atari VCS came out? Anybody? 1977 was the year. And I noticed that the Switch, you know, the Nintendo Switch, which is a lot of you kids' favorite console, I think, mm -hmm. came out almost exactly 40 years later in 2017. 1977 to 2017, 40 years. Now the Switch is over six years old. If we went back in time to 1983, Atari 2600 would have been six years old. And I think with video game history, a lot of people, we tend to look at a year, like we see, oh, the Nintendo came out, the original NES, came out in 1985. So everybody got one in 1985, and all the games came out in 1985. But that's not true, right? A video game console has a life to it, like a, a span. So the Nintendo Switch... At six years old, there's still a lot of new games coming out for it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, uh, that's the old console. We're never going to play that again. So what I thought I'd do is this is kind of a Christmas special, a very convoluted scheme, it seems, the way I'm explaining it. What if we were in 1983 right now, and just like the Switch is six years old, the Atari VCS is six years old, but we still want new games for Christmas. So that's what we're doing today is kind of envisioning, pretend we're in 1983 and choosing what Atari game we want for Christmas. So I've chosen about 20 of my favorite Atari games only from that period from 1977 to 1983, the six years. I'm going to play a bunch of them and, you know, you guys will see what they're like. And then at the end, each of you, I'd like to choose one of the games that you'd like for Christmas. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, I'm only going to do one-player games today just for, well, a couple reasons, but all of us like one-player games, right? Mm -hmm. And and we've had a family tradition of watching me play new games as they come out, right? Like, what are some of our favorite Mario gaming Galaxy. memories? So, sorry. Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey. Mario Galaxy. Mario Galaxy, Galaxy. 1 and 2. And how about... Uh, Mario 3D World. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all those games are ones where old dad sat down with the latest game and the whole family watched him play it. I guess that's kind of weird, but that's how we did it, eh? <laughs> okay, so we're kind of doing the same thing here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a recreation. This is looks very much like a, an original Atari 2600. It's smaller, though. What's really neat about it like it has HDMI, and that's one of the reasons I wanted this was so we could easily hook it up to our new TV in the living room and play together. I also like it actually takes regular Atari 2600 cartridges. There's no SD card on here. There's no built-in games. It just takes real cartridges from 45 plus years ago. <laughs> they work on this thing. That's what's pretty cool about it. And the other neat thing is that it includes a Atari 2600 joystick with the same 9-pin. It's not a USB connector. It's an actual 9-pin, what's called D-sub connector. Those are the things I really liked about this. And I like the idea of uh, that it gives some value to real cartridges again. I don't know if you guys have heard that they've been deleting digital files from people. You pay for a digital file, like you pay for uh, even movies or, or TV shows, and then they'll decide, oh, you can't use that anymore. It's gone, even though you paid for it. Yeah. So there's something about real cartridges. I think we all like on the Switch. We like collecting real cartridges. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're going to go through a bunch of these games. So one thing that this Atari does differently than a real one is that you're actually encouraged to hot swap cartridges. That means not turn it off when you chip plug them or unplug them, because otherwise you have to reboot the system, which takes, as you saw there, about 15 seconds on its own. 
Then once it's booted up, you can put the cartridges in and swap them freely. It takes less time. Okay, so we'll plug it in. Here's bowling. So I've got about 240 cartridges in my collection from Atari. So I've only, it's been really hard to get down to 20. <laughs> and I've arranged them in uh, chronological order. Bowling is actually the oldest one. And this was from March 1979. This is the only 70s game, even though the console was around for about two and a half, three years in the 70s. This is actually the only one I've chosen from those early games. Okay, so bowling. <laughs> I really like bowling games. <laughs> How about we? What have you guys done? Oh yeah, we we bowling. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a lot of fun, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this was like one of the very first ones ever. And a lot of games you don't start with the fire button; you have to press the reset. Oh yeah. I think we... <laughs> so that's that. It might be hard to tell, but that's a guy holding a bowling ball. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got seven there. Do you think I can get a, a spare? Woo! <laughs> I like how it rolls back to you. Yeah, it just yeah. comes back automatically. This is a super fun game. I want to get one strike. Oh. oh. <laughs> he does an extra big celebration if you do get a strike. Oh, I didn't even get a spare. Okay. Come on, strike. Oh. Oh, yeah, and you can actually adjust the... You can kind of spin the ball by moving the joystick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing terribly. Oh. So you're able to affect the ball's trajectory after you? Yeah, you can push the joystick as one time, and that'll make it start to curve to the side. <laughs> oh. So it's kind of like in real bowling, you're able to spin the ball. Although normally you can't do it with telekinesis after you've already released it. <laughs> oh, I really want to strike. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> He's so excited. Yeah. Okay, that's bowling. We can't spend forever on every one of these because we've got 20 to get through. Here's number two. This is called Adventure. March 1980. Okay, we're going to play level one and game reset. So you are this yellow square. Pretty good graphics, eh? And you're here at the good castle, the yellow castle. And you can pick up objects like this key. And then you can use it to go in. And that's where you can get a sword. And leave your key behind. This adventure can only hold one thing at a time. It's a bit so, like a pickaxe. Yeah, so now yeah, it does look or like a pickaxe. Or an arrow, yeah. So we'll go over here. Oh, you turn green? Oh, yeah, I guess you turn whatever color <laughs> the room that you're in is in. There's the, the drake. There, we uh, killed that, dr that duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one in Homestar. Yeah, it is like Homestar. Okay, and so here's the maze, and the adventure's on a maze. And uh, I don't know, somewhere over here. Oh, I went the wrong way, I guess. Maybe this way. Oh, yeah, there's that bridge. Oh, dead end. Okay, so this is one of the very first kind of, well, it's not really an RPG, but, you know, these sort of adventure games for the Atari. There, we can go over the bridge, and now we can go in here. The dark castle. Yeah, there's the dark castle, and inside is the grail that we want. But, uh, yeah. Oh, what happens if we go straight through here? Ooh. Oh, down to dead end. Okay. Well, you got the idea, then the idea is to get this grail, and you got to bring it back to the good castle. Because I think it got <laughs> stolen, uh, or something like that. Oh. 
Whenever it bumps into the wall, it freaks out. Yeah, there's the dead Draco. <laughs> He's still just lying in there. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Oh, there's that oh. green dragon. Oh, there, he's dead too. Okay, there. Now we found the black key, and that's why I needed to get in there. It kind of flickers because it can only show like one thing on the screen at oh, a time. Uh. Well, you can you can actually try and bring a whole bunch of stuff in here at once. Let's see. <laughs> there. You can kind of collect as much stuff as you can in one room here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's called Adventure, and that was one of the very first games with an Easter egg as well. The author hid his name inside of it uh, because Atari wouldn't give uh, programmers credit back then. Huh? Yeah. Oh, Space Invaders. Oh, uh, yeah, this one. That's a good one. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Well, I think all these are some of my favorites. Okay, so I picked up, yep. So this was a super famous game. This came, originally Space Invaders came out in Japan in the uh, arcades, and they would have whole arcades only full of this one game. Like, you would go there, and there would be like 50 of these Space Invaders games, what? and everybody put in their, uh, well, I guess their yen or whatever, the coins mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are called. Yeah, it's you. Well, I'm not doing very good here. I just realized how bad I'm playing some of these games. <laughs> yeah, those that's right, those shields disappear. Okay, try and get the extra points. Oh no. You almost got them. Yeah. Well, they're going fast. Yeah, they go fast at the end. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Good job. Yeah, and another, I just want to show you one other neat thing about this. If we plug in the cartridge and then hold down reset, this is one of the first cheat modes ever in a video game. This has double shot. Did you notice normally you can only shoot one bullet at a time? If you start the game with double shot, with a uh, sort of reset held down, then you can shoot double. And it makes it way easier. So you can just plow through the aliens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there. <Yeah. laughs> That's much easier. That's what, yeah, it was much easier. And this next game is called Asteroids. And let's see, this was released in August 1981. Oh, there, it even says. That was actually fancy to be able to print the text on the screen back then. Mm -hmm. And so this game was called a vector game in the arcades, and that's a different way of displaying. Uh, it draws lines instead of pixels, but the Atari can't do vectors. It does actual, these big blocky pixels is the best it can do. So... Uh, this was actually a pretty big deal. Oh, I'm doing terribly again. The Atari kind of only has two sprites total. So it's kind of amazing when they get this many objects on the screen at once. So this was a really big hit. Uh, Asteroids was super popular in the arcade and then also this port of it. You pull down and you can hyperspace. Oh, I hyperspaced right into a different asteroid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's asteroids. Next one, I got Pac-Man Fever. And this is already from March 1982 already. Like a lot of these games that we think of as very early video games, this is actually almost five years after the Atari was released. Okay. Do you guys... So you guys know Pac-Man. What's weird about this compared to the Pac-Man you know? Well, they're flickering. Yeah, they are flickering a lot. That's right. The maze is what? A bit bigger and there aren't two side portals. Yeah, you're right. There's a top portal instead of side portals. 
there's also a line instead of back dots. Yeah, the dot, that's right. They're more like dashes. I think they called them wafers in this. <laughs> he eats wafers like he's got a comedian or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, Pac-Man does look pretty silly. Does the flickering or flashing make it so that they can have more sprites on the screen? That's right. That's exactly what they're doing. Is that uh, because Pac-Man gets one sprite, so the ghosts all share the one other sprite that's available. <laughs> so what it's doing is drawing one uh, one ghost or one monster, and then waiting, and then drawing the next one, the next frame. So each ghost is only there about a quarter of the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another weird thing is the color scheme. In the original, it was a, like a black background instead of blue. And I think they wanted it, or I heard, they only wanted space games to have black backgrounds. And if it wasn't a space game, they couldn't use a black background. So they did this weird blue and orange scheme instead. Mm -hmm. Which I actually like a lot just because it's nostalgic to me. It's so weird, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's Pac-Man. That was a game that a lot of people were looking forward to and then they thought was really terrible when the Atari version came out. Oh. Yeah, like they were pretty unhappy that wasn't like the one that they played in the arcade. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's. I still think it's fun. This next one is called Yar's Revenge from May 1982. And this was, oh, it says 81. As far as I know, it came out in 82. Oh, well, I might be wrong. I always think this is one of the coolest games. Yar, Yar's is this, uh, actually, I should show the art here. He looks, he's like this really cool looking, I don't know, like metallic giant fly or something. <laughs> he just looks really cool. He looks like the cover of a heavy metal album. And the first time I ever played Yar's Revenge was I went to this guy at school who was like a headbanger, a, a guy I knew from school who was like a headbanger. He, I went over to his house, and this was an Atari game he had. I never seen it before, so I always associate Yar's Revenge with like heavy metal. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so Yar is that that bird guy there, or that uh, bug. And for whatever reason, he's trying to blow up the guy inside of there who's spinning around. He's going to shoot at me. Whoops. And there's that random bullet that just wanders around. And if he, when he nibbles that, <laughs> there, oops, sometimes it makes that extra missile appear. There. And you got to get him with that big thing. You can't just shoot him with your little gun. You gotta get him with that big one there. That one. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So you have to like open up a. Yeah, you have to space. open up a hole through them. Apparently that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got you. Yeah, I got myself. <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah, you gotta remember to get out of the way each time. Whoops. Apparently this middle thing here is actually program code turned into weird graphics, glitchy graphics there. Oh. Pretty cool explosion, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's Yar's Revenge. I hope you guys are trying to remember the game so that you can choose one at the end when we put you on the spot. Okay, this one is called Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars. <laughs> recognize that groovy music? <laughs> and this year, like Luke Skywalker and his snow speeder. And there, you're trying to find the great big ad ats This is like the coolest game when I first saw this. Ooh. Because I don't remember. Oh, oh! I don't remember any other game. Well, there's that secret spot that helps you blow them up quicker. There. On their bones. So what was, yeah, oh, I guess it, it moves around, but yes, sometimes it's on the rear end. <laughs> oh. oh, poor Luke. 
There, he got better. <laughs> um, so I think we never see a game that has such big enemies that took like lots of hits. They're almost like all bosses, eh? Mm -hmm. The fact that we didn't really know what a... Oh, I'm doing terribly again. Uh, we didn't know what a boss was back to a boss fight. Or at least I don't think we had invented that term yet. <laughs> Me being gamers. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that little port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What's that? oh. Oh. Well, I, I did blow up one easy. So, anyway, you gotta blow up all of them. Oh. Okay, that's Empire Strikes Back, which was like the coolest movie too. Oh, Cosmic Arc! Mm -hmm. Well, I'm told this might be my most favorite of all Atari games. This came out apparently in August 82. Okay, so you're like Space Age Noah, and you heard that the Earth, or that the whole solar system is going to get destroyed by a flood, I guess by a, by a supernova or something. Yeah. So you gotta go around your great big arc ship here, the cosmic arc, and go to the different planets and collect two of every animal. There he is. He's gonna fly his little mother ship, or the little daughter ship, the little lander. And these are the little aliens. Ooh, <laughs> you gotta watch out. For some reason, all the places have these planetary defenses. Oh. Yeah, to protect the animals from Noah. <laughs> so this is like flying between the planets. Um, that star field in the background was a really neat thing at the time. It uses a weird trick on the Atari to, to show that. These look like little ETs to me. <laughs> What's neat about it is how every, well, it's every second plant for some reason, you get new it, it, little aliens. So I think if we will, we'll look for one more here. Ah! There's this funny little dogs. <laughs> they look like what? Lizards? <laughs> I'm sure they're like little dogs. Poodles. <laughs> yeah. Space poodles. Ah! Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the four animals on the ship. Yeah, they all died. <laughs> Noah let them down. Pitfall. Pitfall. Okay, this is... So Pitfall, it's funny to think, now we're well into 1982. This is August 1982, the same month that the Commodore 64 was released. Pitfall and the Atari and the Commodore 64 are the same age. And a lot of people, you know, you think, oh, Pitfall's Atari, that's old. Well, it is old. I mean, it's all very old for you guys. But <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows that Pitfall didn't come out until well into 82. All right. Here, I'll hit reset. I remember so, seeing this in Homestar once. Oh, yeah. Homestar has referred to this. So you're Pitfall Harry, and you're trying <laughs> to... He's right there. Uh, he's trying to collect all the treasure in the jungle for some reason. Because <laughs> he's greedy. He's greedy, yeah. Well, he's an adventurer. He's kind of like Indiana Jones. You guys have seen Indiana Jones? Mm. I still think he's greedy. He, well, maybe he is greedy. Okay. What happens if he falls? <laughs> If he falls, then you fall. You can fall down to those pits. And get I just want to get one treasure. There's like I think a diamond ring coming up in a little bit. And you have 20 minutes to explore the jungle. I do not know why you only have 20 minutes, but you do. 
And this game is interesting. You don't always die if you get hit by things like that log. You don't die. You actually just lose points. Mm -hmm. But certain things will kill you, like falling into the quicksand or the lake or whatever. Do the scorpions kill you? Or yeah, the, the scorpions kill you. The fire kills you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here. So these alligators, you got to stand on their eyeballs. <laughs> There. So, <laughs> that was like the biggest challenge when we first saw that. It's like, oh, that's so hard. <laughs> Yay, bag of money. There. For me. Not for you. All right. And then there's these ladders here. You can actually go underground. To finish it in 20 minutes, you actually have to learn how to use these. Oops. You have to learn to use these underground passages. Uh, to jump ahead. Each time you go through an underground passage, it actually warps you ahead three screens. Mm. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. Oh boy, are we even halfway there? Berserk. Okay, so this is a game near this guy in this maze with all these robots who want to kill you. Sometimes they just walk into walls. Mm. There we go. <laughs> he runs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he runs super slow. He's like super busy running, but he goes yeah. super slow. Hey, look at now watch this. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. You but, like the robots from Emperor Zer. Yeah, they're actually pretty cool looking. I like the robot design. He can shoot diagonals. <laughs> oh, there, he just walked into the wall. <laughs> okay, so. Oh! What I've, tried to, what I've tried to do is show you a funny glitch that I think Silas will like. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So they keep, it's pretty funny how they keep shooting you. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time here. Oh, I do it terribly. I gotta be like Uncle Shroomy restarting the game every time I die. <laughs> oh, I did. I want to show you that if they shoot, there. <laughs> Oh, you don't die if it, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it doesn't kill you if it goes through your neck because, it, <laughs> because there's no pixels there. So that was a pretty cool. Game. Uh -huh. Mega Mania. This is September 1982, and this is just a really cool shooter. This looks like a whole bunch of you're like the Starship Enterprise. It looks like. So there's these great big waves. So it's Leo, like kind of like Space Invaders. Yeah. Except different. <laughs> Except different. Yeah, in later waves they start it starts like um oops. There you go. And you can actually control your bullet while it flies, so I'm not doing very good. Ah. Oh. Oh, so a sign there. Similar to that game from Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. So it's neat. Some of them move, move down here. Whoa. Oh. Arch. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Fast food. Some of you kids played this when you were little. Yep. yep. Yeah. And this is a game all about eating. <laughs> yeah. Being a total glutton. <laughs> but you have to avoid one thing. You guys remember what? The purple pickles. Yes. <laughs> so don't eat a purple pickle. The green ones are okay. You gotta eat like these are hamburgers and there, try and name some. What's that one? That was a nacho chip, I think. Ice cream, nacho chip. 
some sort of ice cream. <laughs> that mouth looks a bit like a pink burger. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting fatter. <laughs> I don't want to get fat. <laughs> Well, you just gotta eat everything, though. Alright. Oh! I ate a purple pickle. Oh, there's so many! Sicker, eh? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Wow. <laughs> no! Oh, burp! Burp! <laughs> 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 okay, that's fast food. That was popular with you guys when some of you were really little, too. <laughs> Okay, here's a very important. I put this one in. This isn't really one of my favorite games, but just because it's Spider Man, I thought I would put it in. I think the very first Spider Man game. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the Spider Man theme? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <Okay. laughs> it looks just like him, eh? There you go. Look at so, him. So, Spider Man can't climb up the wall for some reason. All he can do is. Use his web <laughs> and then swing up. I don't know why. Web swing up. It was kind of neat to have a web. Uh, that kind of web. Oh! <laughs> Did someone push you down? No, I. The end of my web didn't end up on anything useful. So this is what's kind of tricky here. Oh! oh. I do that. Are those people enemies? Oh! 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 <laughs> I thought they were flames. Well, I think they're people. I'm actually not sure what they're doing. Do they cause you trouble, or...? Well, sometimes you seem to get points Bombs. if you go on top of them, but I don't know why. Like... Maybe you're saving them? Yeah. Oh! Ah. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so up at the top... You know who his enemy always was in these er back in these days? Green Goblin. Yeah, Green Goblin. That's right. I was just kind of hoping to get up to the Green Goblin, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> First, you should try and get that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's Spider Man. Okay, we're getting there. Vanguard. This was the first game I'd ever seen with like four-way shooting on Atari, at least, with like lots of scrolling, even though the Atari's terrible at smooth scrolling horizontally. So actually look at you can check out what the background does. So the idea ooh. Ah So you're always shooting forward. Also, ah. <laughs> this is one of the games that my neighbor had, and one day we got evacuated from school, and uh, so I went to their house because mom, my uh, mom and dad, your grandma, uh, Poppy and grandma, yeah, they were at work. So I went to the neighbor's house whose mum was at home, so I could go there and I uh, got to play Vanguard. And I just played it like the whole time mum and dad even got home from work. I still stay at the neighbor's playing <laughs> Vanguard. I think the neighbor's trying to hint that I should go home now. And they're like, your parents are home now. And I'm like, okay. And then I just kept playing Vanguard in, in their basement. Because I didn't have an Atari at home then. Okay, so we got through the first leg, and now it's actually like a downward scroll. Mm -hmm. So I was like, ooh, that was a big deal. Scroll different, oops, scroll different ways. Okay, that's Vanguard. 
Okay, next. River Raid. The, these came out Christmas 1982. So just one year ago. R River Raid was by the same company as Pitfall. David Crane wrote Pitfall, and Carol Shaw wrote River Raid. And this was one of the first famous video games made by a lady. Uh, and she's pretty neat. She's actually like a, a real pioneer. Okay, so we'll try playing this. This was a super popular game, too. And I don't know why, but you're flying your jet along the river. I guess to blow everything up. You blew up the fuel. Yeah, but you're flying so low that you can't fly over the ground. Your airplane can only fly over water. Oops, I... yeah. Well, it blew up more fuel. <laughs> blew up the bridge. And what was neat about this game, this, this game uses a linear feedback shift register, which is like a random number generator that always returns the same values. And it's how it makes this huge world. Like, it's actually the same map every time you play. But the thing is that it would take, like, I guess megabytes to store this whole world, but these had like eight kilobytes in them, these cartridges. Actually, I can't remember how much this one has, but anyway, so it would use something called procedural generation to make the world, kind of like what, what uses, you guys know that term, right? Procedural yeah. generation? Mm -hmm. Like Minecraft or, well, not necessarily Minecraft. Anyway, they used all kinds of neat tricks, so this was a, a, a neat one that used a lot of tricks uh, to make such a huge world. Like, it goes on and on, seemingly forever. <laughs> River Raid. Okay, here's a very famous game that some people say is, like, the worst video game ever made. Do you know what I'm talking about? E.T. E.T. <laughs> now, I don't think it's the worst video game ever at all. In fact, it's one I, like, I chose as one of my top 20. Because I think it's really good, actually. It's just got a couple little flaws. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we watched E.T. a while ago, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was great graphics for 1982. It's like, oh, it's like a photo of him. I can't believe this is like watching the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we go. So here's E.T. getting dropped off on Earth by axe. Oh, his friends leave. And now he's stranded in the forest. And now he can wander around. And uh, these pits, in a way you want to avoid them. So E.T. can levitate. Is that by extent a no, that's his, that's his head. We, <laughs> there's a person? Yeah, there's that, that FBI agent. So some people hated this game because they were always like falling in the oops, because they were always falling in the pits. <laughs> but what you gotta do is just move away from the pits. There, I've got one. Uh... Ah. Ah, I, got, oh. I got stolen by that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he put me, he's gonna put me away in that. I think that's the jail. <laughs> yeah, he put me in jail. Oh, and there's the FBI agent. He's coming after me now, too. Oh. So you gotta levitate out. But in some of these pits, is actually... Oh, I did that wrong. It's actually best to move... There. I'm gonna pick up an M&M, that little dot. That's what it is. Now up at the top... Oops. There, I can call yeah. it. <laughs> so you see that icon up at the top there? Yeah. That one's to call Elliot. As you move around the map, different things appear. So this one is senses where pieces of your phone are. So if you press the button, nope, there's nothing there. Woo! You can run too. There, there's a piece of our phone. And now you can see that we collected a bit of it up there. It's the guy that took you to the Oh, that chair. guy again. <laughs> Woo! Okay, there. Wah! Ah. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. There. Did you, you see how that yeah. little flash happened? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Got stolen again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor E.T., that's what happens to a lot. There's another piece of the phone. 
So it's actually a neat adventure game because most games didn't have like a big, well, I say a big world, like a, multi <laughs> <laughs> a multi screen world like this. But lots of people didn't want to read the manual or anything. And it was a tricky game to figure out. Woo! <laughs> okay, so that's ET. Actually, I yes. think a pretty good game. Okay, and the other movie from 1982 that I liked even better than E.T. was this one called Tron. And you guys have watched Tron with me before? Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, so here's, here's Tron. He's running around and he uses this to destroy his enemies. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Oh. oh. And then if you hit these doors, then you can run through them if there's one across. So watch, you can go through this one, and then that door disappears, and I reappeared at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Ah! Ooh. <laughs> that was a really cool running animation for them, too. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome graphics. Oh. Another doorway there. All right, that's Tron Deadly Discs. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. This is maybe one of my favorite shooters. I was thinking about playing Demon Attack in this, but actually, I like this Phoenix game even better. There we go. This one also reminds me of Space Invaders. Yeah, it's another one like Space Invaders, but has some neat tricks like you get a shield if you pull down. And see after the th at the third wave. It's pretty fast paced. Now these big phoenixes come. You have to shoot them in the middle. If you get them just in the wing, keep going. yeah, you keep going and they grow their wing back. Phoenixes aren't even real birds. No, <laughs> they are. I saw one. <laughs> I don't believe you. What? <laughs> I would never lie. <laughs> oh, That's well those are scary. So these, this is actually a lot like Demon Attack, this phase. Ah, and if I can get through these guys, then we'll see the big boss mothership. Ooh. When you got your shield on, you can't move, though. Oh. So close. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look at that little guy. Yeah. Okay, here. Oh, there. Gotta get the boss. Ah, there, <laughs> yay! We got the, got the boss. Okay, that's Phoenix. Okay, last two games, guys. I hope everybody chose one. Smurf. I know I did. Okay, I love Smurf. Did you guys? Do you guys even know what Smurfs are? We yeah. watched a bit of it. Yeah, they're like these blue, blue guys, oh, yeah. three apples high. Yeah. Yeah. I saw this one before. Okay, so for whatever reason, as usual, Smurfette got kidnapped by. Oh, the evil guy who lives in the castle. What's his name? Uh, anyway, you gotta, you gotta go help her. This is totally similar to Mario. It's kind of like Mario. Totally. But this is way before. This is from... Oh yeah, what happened to my thing? So these games have been... Phoenix was February 1983, and Smurf, Rescue in Gargamel's Castle, this is April 83. Okay, here he goes. He, he super jumps. <laughs> so this is before uh, Super Mario Brothers, man. This is the original Super Mario. <laughs> this, I'm just this, Mario this reminds me of it. This is yeah. fancy music for an Atari game. It's super, yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. Very few Atari games have in-game music. Now this part, watch this. Ooh. <laughs> it 
it's like echoey and out of tune yeah in the cavern it's like the first ever context sensitive game music that would change depending on the the mood see it goes happy again mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have the pretty sunset yeah oh well there's her fat she's going ah <laughs> <laughs> does it just bring you back to the beginning? It does, but at least it starts adding some variations like see now. Oh, evil bird. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh you can't defeat it? it just yeah, you gotta run on you gotta either run under him or there, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 the fence kills you. <laughs> oh, I walked into a fence. <laughs> the fence is toxic. <laughs> toxic fence. <laughs> oh. That's enough of that one. Okay, That's and the fun. final game for today is one called Enduro. And I've always liked racing games. I think it might be because of this one. I especially like racing games that you can just kind of go a long way rather than like little laps or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I like Mario Kart and all that, but I like games where you go far. So Enduro, you have to go all the way through the day and the night you have to pass 200 cars. So you see that counter there? It shows that oh, we have yeah. 194 to go. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do a whole game now, but... Oh. And, yeah. And this actually became a, uh, one of my favorite Commodore games. This is called the Great American Cross Country Road Race. Super long title. And it's kind of like the successor to this game, where they added things like gas stations, and you can choose your route driving across the USA. Mm -hmm. So it changes here from time to time. Oh. oh, there now. Suddenly it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> Comes on quick. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's like nighttime driving and a bunch other. Are you actually racing? Uh, you're just trying to kind of survive. It's endurance racing. They're like a kind of like a rally race. And, oh yeah, and the great uh, the C64 Great American Cross Country Road Race, which is also on like the Atari 800. Uh, they added police to and stuff like that, Back so that you can't just uh, green. speed all the time. Yeah, now it's actually <laughs> I think evening. Oh. <laughs> All right, 80. Oh, look, we're getting there. Oh. oh. That's a nice sunset, eh? Yeah. yeah. The one thing that the Atari really had going for it is nice colors. Yeah. 128 different colors. Wow. When most other systems, like even the Commodore 64, only had 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At night time, they turn to just lights. So that's true. And the cars. Maybe are I just lied that we're not going to do all two hundred. Getting close. Oh, oh. We're so close. We might as well do it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like driving in the fog. Yeah. I feel like it Almost is driving there. in the fog. No. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we did it. We got the flags. <laughs> what happened? Like, you can continue? Yeah, you can keep going, yeah. Does it keep track of anything? Like, I'm actually, I can't remember what happens after <laughs> this. <laughs> Okay, that's it. We tried them all. 
Oh, mm-hmm. boy. All right. So, uh, some of them are good. Some of them weren't too impressive, I guess. So, well, uh, <laughs> that's okay. So, does everybody want to choose? Are we going to start with, with kid number one? Okay. Are you ready? Do you have a choice? I guess I liked... Well, there, there were a few that I thought were pretty fun, but I think I like River River Raid. Yeah, I like. I think I want River Raid for Christmas. Right on. <laughs> okay, River Raid for number one. Okay, kid number two. I think for Christmas I would like Empire Strikes Back. Woo! I like the background, and I like Star Wars anyway. And those were some cool ad-ads. Yeah, the ad-ads are very cool. <laughs> that plays nice theme music at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Empire Strikes Back for number two. Number three, not here. <laughs> number four. I think I would like fast food. <laughs> I knew one. I knew it. Yeah, that is a popular one. I also like Pitfall, but I think I like fast food a bit more. Yeah, fast food probably got the biggest laughs. Mm-hmm. Burp. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting fatter. Yeah. <laughs> it actually plays pretty good on its so- own. Oh. I was going to say it plays pretty good on its so- own, and then it <laughs> deliberately <laughs> ate a purple pickle. <laughs> Okay, number five. I think my favorite was Tron. I think I oh, want Tron. Oh, Tron Deadly Discs. What did you like about it? It looked really fun the way he threw the disc. Yeah, it's neat, eh? The, the way it kind of, the, the disc kind of curves. Or... Yeah. I like how it finds its way back to Tron, too. Yeah, I thought that looked really fun. Cool. So number six, what game do you like? I think I would like Pitfall. Pitfall. That was like one of the most popular games for Christmas 1982. All right. Good choice. A whole 20 years before I was born. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Number seven. I think I'd like Pac-Man for Christmas. Pac-Man. Right on. What did you like about Pac-Man? I liked how the ghosts were flickering all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they sure were. <laughs> you see how they're actually kind of colored, but it's so hard. They're flickering so bad. They all look just kind of like white. Yeah. But they actually yeah. are like one is kind of pink and one's kind of blue. And, and one's kind of a lighter blue. A lighter blue. <laughs> 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 all right, Pac-Man. Good. And number eight. Um, I think uh, I like the adventure the most. Adventure. Good choice. That is going to make some of the viewers very happy. There it is. The classic yellow castle. (laughs) Pretty nice. Okay, and you guys can choose, since number three isn't home right now, you guys can choose one for number three. I want E.T. You can. (laughs) Which is... Do you think number three would like E.T.? I think. Or you you could say, I don't care. (laughs) I don't care. <laughs> I think you would, he would like the Smurf most. <laughs> yeah, maybe he would like Smurfs better. That's true. Okay, well, E.T. We'll say E.T. or we'll say Smurf there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Photorealistic? Mm. It is. It's totally photorealistic. It mm. looks like he could reach out and <laughs> touch us. Touch us. <laughs> With his, with his long fingers. <laughs> Did he see you kiss us? Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. You, you don't like an E.T. kiss? <laughs> no, <baby>. No. <laughs> but E.T. loves us. <laughs> I think he just loves Elliot. He, do you think so? Yeah. He loved no. He loved Gertie too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He would probably love us if he crashed at our house. Yeah, yeah. if you guys would scream, he'd poke out of the bushes there and scream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it. Christmas nineteen eighty three. The games we would choose are 
River Raid, Empire Strikes Back, Fast Food, Tron Deadly Discs, Pitfall, Pac-Man, Adventure, and either E.T. or Smurf. <laughs> Did anybody else want to say anything? No. No, that's enough, eh? Yeah. Okay, so from our house to yours, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and we hope you play some Atari today, or whatever else you like doing. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to my patrons for their support, and we'll whoop, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.